Very good morning, 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 morning. How are you doing? My name is Hartley, all the way here in London, UK, central London. Hope you're doing well, hope you're doing fine. Before we get started, don't forget, don't get into the crime stories and forget to um, like and subscribe absolutely free down below this video. So please, um, if you can do that. And if, of course, if you do really like these, um, videos on my channel please share them with your friends and family okay today's video is really um, a combination of crimes throughout the usa um, saying that i'm not sure if you saw the um yesterday's international news with um two military horses running through central london and injuring a number of people also damages to uh, London transport buses and also London taxis uh, it was an amazing thing. I don't know if you'll get a chance to have a look at look at the international news on that over there in London. Okay, getting back to the USA with all the crimes and whatnot, I'll be bringing you a combination of uh, crimes um, that's uh, being highlighted by different um, news outlets over there in the USA. I must say, interrupting, we have a beautiful day in London here today. The sun is out, finally. It's been months um, since we've had a decent a decent morning without rain and clouds and whatnot. But um, it's looking good outside, so let's hope it stays like that, like that at least for the next three or three to six months. Well, I'm, I'm sure it wouldn't, but um, it would be nice. Okay, if you have any comments, please drop your comments below on this video, or you can email me. Just check the, um, the ticker at the bottom, you'll see our, um, our email address, which is crimeupdatefiles at gmail.com. And I'm Citizen Hartley, or you can call me Hartley, but um, I'm just a basic citizen, I'm not a policeman, I'm not a lawyer, I'm just a basic um, citizen that Love crime, not doing it, but bringing it to your attention wherever, whichever part of the world you're at. I do know I've got a few um, uh, subscribers over there in um, the African continent as well as Australia, here in the U over here in the USA, and of course, definitely young London and a few um, over there in Europe. So, um, okay, next week starts the Karen Reed trial finally. I think they've got um, apparently 19 to 20 jurors, which is all sworn in, I think, already. And it's definitely um, going to be kick kicking off on Monday. There's still a few motions that's outstanding, which the judge, I understand the judge, will be um, giving an answer to those outstanding motions today. Basically, yeah. Definitely sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I was rudely interrupted just now. Um, as you know, <laughs> definitely coming live. <laughs> that shouldn't happen, but um, okay, we're going to continue. Um, where were we? Okay, yes, the Karen Reed um, murder trial. Finally, finally uh, going to be kicked off proper on Monday, Monday morning over there i think is it is it massachusetts massachusetts yes and um they've got the 12 juries that will be in on the case and i think they've got another nine to ten on standby because as you know it's a very very long it's going to be a very very long um trial and it seems to be um hardships upon some of the jurors or commitments that they've had um some of them wanted to opt out, but I think the judge has um, kept them in. But um, she do expect this possibility that there's going to be dropouts. So um, she's prepared for that by having extra jurors around for that. Um, so yes, um, looking forward to that getting on the way. Um, as, I, as, as you know, the case basically, um, she's accused of um, manslaughter of her boyfriend, which is a Boston police officer. Uh, this is 
why the prosecution is um, this is the prosecution has actually charged her on that, and obviously she, her defense is denying that. She's denying that to say that she just dropped her boyfriend off at the doorstep of Brian, Brian Albert's house, and she drove off and left him there. As far as she's concerned, he went into the house, and what has happened in the house is down to the, I think it was 11 or 13 other people in the home on that night. So um, she denies murder or any involvement in the death of her boyfriend. So we will definitely get to the truth on that um, on starting on Monday. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I can definitely keep you guys informed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And um, if you can use the uh, top click on it, which will any information that comes up, you will be you'll be the first to get get it. So um, please subscribe to that. Um, as I said, this this video is uh, about events and uh, cases that's going around the U.S. at present. So we're going to um, give just bring you the highlights of this. So um, keeping you guys informed. As I said, I am your source of uh, crimes that you might not have heard, heard of, uh, bringing it to your attention, but it's good to know what's going on around in the different states or towns or cities. So um, this, is, uh, this is your um, source of that information. Um, a little bit more about Karen Reed's uh, murder trial. Um, uh, uh, what, what is a concern at the moment um, there is a concern by forensic uh, experts who zeroed in on two, two pieces of evidence um, uh, about the autopsy and the way the victim's clothes were handled. And it's, um, it's said to believe that the um, medical examiner's testimony will be, uh, will be pivotal. <laughs> this, is, this is all by the... Um, this is uh, actually being uh, publicized by Fox, Fox News. Um, uh, what we've got here, there's a bit here where it says, I urge every, everybody that's following this case to rely, re really pay close attention to what the medical examiner says, because they will be asked to explain the logic behind listing this as an undetermined uh, death. Um, I would expect the defense to particularly focus in on that question and it will be framed in a manner in which they will say, well, you know we've got the prosecutor here that is saying that this is in fact a murder. What is it, doctor? What is it? Doctor, what is keeping you from ruling this as a homicide? Um, Yes, and basically what that means, because I think the, uh, the district attorney actually uh, made a statement uh, live, live across the news networks that um, they must not look at anyone else but um, Karen Reed. She's the only one that is involved in this murder, or shall I say homicide. Um, he claims that no one in the house was involved in this. Um, we're not sure how he could come to that, um, making the statement so strongly about that because you know it hasn't been to court yet, and you're innocent until proven guilty. So um, this is something that needs to be uh, look, looked at. Okay, we're going to move on to um, another case here. Um, let's see what this one is saying. Florida man named prime suspect in disappearance of the death of a girlfriend. Uh, okay, let's read that and see, get that some more clarity on this. So it's a Florida man named as the prime suspect in the disappearance and the death of a girlfriend's daughter charged with murder. His name is uh, Stephen Stearns, 38. He was charged with first degree murder on Wednesday in February disappearance. Um, and the death of a 13-year-old Madeline Soto. Um, that's, um, 
this is this statue story came by Elizabeth Pritchett from um, Fox News. Um, give you a little bit more on that. It says uh, a Florida man arrested in February during an investigation into disappearance and the death of his girlfriend's teenage daughter has officially been charged with murder. Osceola County jail records show Stephen Stearns, 38, who was arrested on February 28 on um, unrelated charges, was charged with first degree murder on Wednesday in connection with the death of 13 year old Madeline Soto. Soto was found dead on March the 1st, allegedly killed by Stern sometime between 25th and the 27th of February, according to an indictment obtained by um, Fox News Tampa. Uh, I think this is, this is, uh, this, I'm not sure if you can see the picture there. Stephen Stearns, he's uh, 38 years of age. Uh, he's currently in the Osceola, Osceola County County Jail. Um, so you say, the evidence shows an individual that was entrusted to keep Madeline safe made calculated moves to dispose Madeline's um, belongings and place her body in a wooded area before she was uh, reported missing. Kissimmee Police Chief uh, Betty Holland said during a news conference on Wednesday afternoon. Stern was dubbed the prime suspect in Soto's uh, disappearance in February and was initially taken into custody for sexual battery and possessing child sexual abuse material after volunteering from voluntarily turning his phone into the police. A digital um, forensic unit was able to reveal that the images and the videos on Stern's phone, phone were criminally and sexually in nature. This is by the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Um, uh, this is said, said by the Orange County um, Sheriff's Office when um, when when he was arrested in March, continue in March he was also charged with eight counts of sexual battery of a child on the twelfth, five counts of uh, sexual battery with a child aged twelve to eighteen, seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation, and forty counts of unlawful possession of material depicting sexual performance by a child. Court, court documents in uh, those cases implied Stern may have abused Maddie for years leading up to disappearance of and, and death. This is all according to the Fox 13. So um, that's what's going on over there in, um, in Florida. Uh, I think somewhere around um, Tampa, this happened. Uh, it continues to say, while the only person charged in Soto's disappearance and death as of Wednesday is Stern, the investigation remains um, active, according to Will, uh, Will J. The homicide unit chief for the state attorney um, office for Ninth Judicial Circuit. Stern was, last, Stern was the last person to see uh, Soto on February 26th when he allegedly dropped her off a few blocks away from her school that morning. According to the police uh, during his February arrest, when her mother went to pick up uh, about 4.30 p.m., she learned that Maddie never made it to the school that day. Well, that's it. Um, so uh, Mr. Stern there, Stephen Stern, 38, is charged with first degree murder amongst dozens of other sexual charges. Um, uh, he remains at the present in uh, Osceola County Jail. So um, we will definitely follow, follow that one, one up. Right, don't forget, if you have got a, a case yourself you would like us to um, publicize here on Crime Vlog Weekly, please email me at crimeupdatefiles at gmail.com and we could get that up and running for you or if there's anything such as like missing persons or anything to do with crime, we're definitely here to help. And 
um, uh, please subscribe below and share uh, these videos with um, your friends and family okay um, we do have another another um, another case um, another case coming up here there was a there was a shooting um, a Texas high school shooting uh, says leaves 18 year old student dead shot multiple times suspect is in custody uh, this was published on uh, April 25th yeah no this one by Sarah 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 written w h i w t e n from our Fox Fox News uh, just a quick brief of um, the rundown on this one an 18 year old student is dead after being shot five times five to six times by another student outside uh, Bowie High School in Texas it never ends never ends on the shootings there eh? In a press conference, Arlington Police Chief Al Jones and Arlington ISD Superintendent Dr. Max Smith said that the shooting happened at the local public school around 2.50 p.m. Wednesday near a portable um, building outside. The school was placed on lockdown just as students were about to be left out of the day, let out for the day. When school resource officers arrived at the scene, they found the 18-year-old male student lying unresponsively on the ground with uh, apparent gunshot wounds. Wow. There you go, that's the school there in the background and that's the scene there after us. So, so he said, the student was immediately taken to the nearby hospital but died while at the hospital. Officers say the 17-year-old suspect shooter tried to run away from the school but police found him near the campus and arrested, and arrested him. He will be charged with murder once he is booked into the Arlington City Jail. This is uh, said by the police. Once again, this uh, this story is from Fox Fox News. So they say family were told to reunite with their kids at a district building miles away from the campus hours after the shooting occurred. Um, there's a sneak statement by the Arlington police said. They will share more information about the incident when it comes available. Chief Jones said from the community um, cannot tolerate this kind of violence. Our hearts are, are with the entire Bowie High School uh, community tonight, Jones said. We, we as the community cannot tolerate this kind of violence, not in our neighborhoods and not in our schools. Violence is never the right answer. We will uh, continue to work in lockstep with our partners at Arlington ISD to ensure our schools are safe places where students can learn. As I said, it's a never, a never, a never ending uh, situation with uh, gun violence in the USA. It just uh, continues and con continues. Um, here in the UK, we probably get about uh, maybe 10 or 15 shootings a year which is not good at all. We don't need any shootings. We don't need anyone to die of gunshots. Uh, we have got a high, um, a high knife crime uh, murder uh, rate here, which they're trying to get under control. But guns, guns are very hard to get hold of over here, especially the ammunition. So um, in America, they need to really cut back on the on the grounds, on the, on the guns, I should say. Okay, if you just joined us, thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Hartley. Um, uh, I'm, my name is Hartley, based over here in London, UK, bringing you the latest um, crime news up there in North America, uh, whether it's be in the city, towns, or villages, we will bring it to you. Stories that you haven't actually heard, heard before um let's see if we can find another uh another story for you and um see where's the next one uh coming up from okay we did the uh texas high school shooting um uh okay um okay there's we've got this one it says um oklahoma man bludgeoned girlfriend's relative with a brick before dumping remains in a wildlife 
refuge. Wow. <laughs> it gets very gruesome. gruesome. Okay, uh, giving you the full statement that we've got here. Um, this one again from uh, Fox uh, Fox Crime News, quoted Fox Crime News. An Oklahoma man alongside um, his girlfriend bludgeoned his girlfriend's relative with a brick before dumping the victim's remains in a wildlife ref refuge, federal authorities said. According to the release from the U.S. Attorney's uh, Office, this is the Western District of Oklahoma, Tevin Terry, 29, and a co-defendant, Nicole Loxton, 24, were indicted for the May 2023 murder of 68-year-old Karen Dinkers. Um, uh, Dinkers. Uh, Simeon admitted to officers that he agreed to kill Smith and went to her home and bludgeon Smith to death with a brick and, or, and put her body in the trunk of uh, her vehicle, vehicle and disposed of the body in the Wichita, Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. Wow. <laughs> Never aims if it's not one way, it's another. Simeon also admitted to law enforcement that the girlfriend requested that he murder her relative Smith because the the pair allegedly had fallen out. You know, if someone asks you to do something like that, criminal act, you don't just go and do it. You, know, you should have actually gone to the police. Don't take part in it. Um, so they say, according to the affidavit, uh, Smith was part of a Native American tribe, the Comanche Nation. I was found dead on May 17, 2023, in the Wichita Mountains uh, refuge by authorities. So the investigators searched the woman's home uh, and found blood consistent with the violent struggle. Also, it says law enforcement um, noted that Smith's vehicle was missing from her, her home. Wow, 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 wow. So um, days later, on May 21st, Texas law enforcement observed the victim's vehicle driving south of Dallas, Texas. Officers attempted to pull the vehicle over, but Simeon and Loxon fled and led police on a high-speed chase before crashing into the lake. There we go. That is uh, one of the other um, cases that's uh, going on. Um, over there in the USA, that's over in Oklahoma. Okay, uh, what's this we've got? Um, there's one Chinese student gets nine months for harassing person posting uh, democracy, democracy leaflets in Boston campus. Okay, okay, let's see what that one's all about. A farmer, a farmer. Berkeley College of Music student from China was sentenced Wednesday to nine months in prison for stalking and threatening persons who posted. Um, one second, what am I doing? Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> okay, start. Let's start that one again. I lost track there. A former Berkeley College of Music student from the China was sentenced Wednesday to nine months in prison for stalking and threatening a person. Who posted a flyer in um, support of democracy in the in the Asian um, country? Authorities said the leaflet that was posted on the campus in Boston on October 2022 20, read, "Stand with Chinese people," along with the statements such as, "We want freedom," uh, "We want democracy." The U.S. attorney in Boston said. This is another story by uh, Fox News, reported by Fox News. Just uh, keeping you informed where it's all coming from. In response to um, X Lee, X Lee Wood, who's 26 years of age, threatened to chop off the person's hands, reported their families to China's Public Security Agency. Okay, very violent, very violent. Uh, Mr. Wu's criminal conduct is very serious. He, he harassed the fear of potential um, retribution from PRC government.
to harass and threaten an innocent individual who had posted an innocuous, innocuous uh, pro documents pro documency uh, flyer. So they say Mr. Wu's violent tr um, threats uh, achieve his goal of um, instilling fear in the efforts to silence the brave victim and others who might want to speak up against PRC government. There you go. Um, this, as I said, that one, that this was uh, um, from the Fox, um, from the uh, Fox Crime News on this uh, stu the student who got nine, nine months for harassing a person on the Boston, the Boston campus there. Okay, um, what else can we give you here? Let's see. Okay, so, okay, this one, a bit of an interesting one. Florida man shoots family dog in the face during argument over infidelity. Um, this is by Bree Stimson from uh, Fox News. There's, um, as you can see, the dog. You see the dog there on that one. Wow. Okay, I'm um, going to read out the statement for you. A Florida man was arrested this week on animal cruelty charges um, uh, after he allegedly shot the, uh, the family dog in the face during a fight about whether he cheated on his fiance. Um, Fanhan Deenham, 41, had allegedly threatened to shoot everyone in the home including two children, after he, he was confronted about cheating allegations. Lee County Sheriff Carmine Marceno said in a Tuesday press conference, after officers arrived at the home on Monday night, they found the dog, Louis, hiding gushing blood from his neck and his face. Surveillance uh, video um, that the Sheriff's Department showed at the press conference appeared to show Denham shooting the pit bull uh, mix outside of the home. The dog falls over in the video and can't be heard screaming, um, screaming and crying. These screams continued after uh, the video uh, cuts, cuts out. The dog has showed zero aggression, agri aggression. The dog showed zero aggression and only wanted to be loved. Louis was taken to pet to the pet hospital where he immediately care was um, was given. He is expected to make a full recovery, but we need some time uh, to fully heal uh, the wounds of his face. Cruelty to animals, definitely not good. Cruelty to anyone, uh, definitely, definitely not good. Um, hope you guys are doing okay. Hope you guys are doing okay there. Um, uh, as I said, we'll just bring you the latest um, up-to-date news uh, across across the um, the USA. We're going to um, let's see what's the um, what's the next one I can get you. There is so much. We're just trying to get the best on this. There is so much um, so much to go on here. Uh, what's the news? Okay, I was um, actually reading this one this morning. It's a strange case that's going on over there in, um, I think this one's also Oklahoma, if I'm correct. Or correct. Uh, Sarah from Britain, this one is, this is the, the, the story came in from her of uh, Fox News. And it says, say, a fifth arrest made in connection to the murdered Kansas mum who disappeared without trace. It now says five suspects have been charged with first degree murder in the deaths of Veronica Butler and Gillian Kelly. As I said, this is according to um, Fox News. They apparently they were on their way driving to Oklahoma um, um, when this actually happened. A little bit more details from the Oklahoma authorities. The Oklahoma authorities continue their investigation into the deaths of 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Gillian Kelly. 
an addition, uh, additional arrest was made on Wednesday. The Oklahoma State uh, Bureau of Investigations uh, confirmed in a press release that 31-year-old Paul Grice was arrested and booked in the Texas County Jail on two counts of first-degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. Price arrests came after four additional suspects were previously arrested in connection to the deaths of Butler and Kelly, who disappeared without trace. Uh, this is since March 30th. This is him here, just, um, he's just been arrested, a 39-year-old 39, 39 um, man who's just been arrested. Um, uh, he's currently in the Texas County Jail. The two Kansas mom's bodies were discovered in a rural Texas county in Oklahoma and were identified and quickly identified by the authorities. As they said, the pair were last seen on March 30th heading to pick up uh, their children before the, their car was up, found abandoned near an Oklahoma, um, a Oklahoma, Kansas border with foul play suspected. The OSBI announced April 13th that Tad Burt Cullen, 43, Tiffany Michelle Adam, 54, and Cole Earl uh, Tomley, 50, and Cole Earl Tomley, 44, were taken into custody. The four, the four belong to a religiously affiliated anti-government group called God's Misfits. Never ending, never ending. <laughs> it was unclear if Grice was involved in the safe anti-government group. All four of the suspects were booked into the Texas County Jail on two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of um, conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. Those are the, um, those are the faces there of the um, people who's under arrest. As I said, you are innocent until proven guilty. Um, but, um, We'll see what evidence the district attorneys do have on all these five that uh, has been arrested. So you say Adams, one of the women arrested, is reportedly the grandmother of Butler's children. Court records reveal that Adams was uh, involved in a custody, custody dispute um, of, with Butler's children. The children's father is in a rehabilitation facility the document said that uh, the document said the custody the custody battle involving um, butlers began in February 2019, with many um, hearings and court appearances. And in the weeks leading up to her death, motions were filed requesting extended visitation for Butler. So it looks like there is some sort of motive there for um, these people that has been arrested. Definitely a children's custody battle was going on. And I think there were, were, uh, were due to be a case coming up around the 17th of April, just before um, the bodies of these two ladies were found. Um, some more information about the court. Kelly was the, Kelly was the court ordered supervisor accompanying Butler to pick up her children on the morning of March 30th the day the two months disappeared. Court, court documents revealed that the OSB obtained a warrant for, to search Adam's phone on April 1st. Searches performed on the device allegedly included taser pain level, gunshots, prepared cellular phones, and how to get some, someone out of your house. This is seen to be the searches on the telephone, so um, Yes, it looks like the prosecution have got some phone DNA, so um, which is very important in most of these uh, cases. So say a search of the local gun shops later showed that Adams had purchased five stun guns on March 20, uh, 23. Okay, so say, um, so say Fox News had had reached out to. OSB for comment, but I uh, did not get the re reply on that. But this is one case I think we'll be definitely following up. So we're going to keep you informed. 
inform on that like that one over there in the, the Kansas border. Okay, what's this one? Seems to be quite a lot over there in Oklahoma. Okay, this one says Oklahoma man with ammo in Turks, Turks and Caicos airport faces 12 years in prison, risk of losing everything. Okay, that looks like something we can uh, get get to find out what's what actually happened there. Looks like that's the um, that's the family there. Obviously, definitely not showing the kids on there. And this one, this is uh, what's this one here? Okay, Andrew Cochlin of uh, Fox News brought this story up, and it says an Oklahoma man is facing up to twelve years in prison for ha having ammunition. In his carry-on bags at Turk and Caicos Airport, according to the GoFundMe page uh, for his family, Ryan and Valerie Watson, the parents of two young children, were flying home from their island vacation, where they were um, celebrating a friend's 40th birthday on April 12th, when they were arrested at the airport. Um, they had their lives turned upside down when they tried to return home as local airport securities found four rounds of ammunition un unknowingly left in his duffel bag from a deer hunting trip. A description on the family's GoFund page states, it was not noticed by TSA when leaving America. Now they are facing a legal system that's uh, unfair, daunting and expensive, that operates differently um, than the American justice. Okay, you do need to check your bags when traveling because you can get yourself to serious, um, serious problems. Um, they do ask you, have you checked your bags? Did you want to check your bags? So obviously you have to make sure you know exactly what's in your bag before you um, try to cross a border. Any part of the world that is because you never know what situation um, you can get yourself in there. TSI authorities strictly enforce all firearms related laws, uh, the alert states. The penalty for traveling to TSI with a uh, firearms, ammunition, or other weapons is a minimum of custodial sentence of 12 years. Custodial sentence of 12 years. The embassy of um, the embassy further stated that Americans should carefully check their luggage for stray ammunition or forgotten weapons before departing TCI. There you go. That's an um, unfortunate situation there. Uh, seems as though it's um, something that was actually forgotten in uh, in his luggage. But yeah, as I said, I'm what. They're actually saying you you should really check your luggage thoroughly um, before before traveling. Right. Okay. Um, what have we got here? Okay. Okay. Once again, if you just join us, thank you very much. My name is Hartley. Just running through a few of the um, uh, crime crime cases that has uh, taken take, taken place across. The USA over the last sort of two to three weeks, really, basically, uh, keep you very much um, up to date. Okay, um, this one actually happened 17, about 17 hours ago. Um, uh, uh, there was a stabbing, a, Queen, a Queens Road bridge incident ends up with a stabbing on the uh, Upper East, Upper East Side. I haven't got much of the full report of that one, but uh, if we get more information on that, we will bring that forward to you. Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay. This, yeah. Okay. Yes. We here's, yeah. We have got some more information on this one. It's um. This uh, it says in. NYC road rage saga comes to a bloody end in the Ritz Sea Upper East Side after 17 miles. Um, continues, 
continues, it continues uh, that this uh, road ridge happened, um, it ended up happening around the Manhattan's upper east side uh, in a violent stabbing uh, in front of hor horrified bystanders. NY NYPD told Fox News uh, did show that the altercation began around 7 p.m. Tuesday when two men reportedly um, first got into an argument in Queens. A preliminary investigation determined that the men allegedly cut each other off repeatedly as they headed towards uh, Manhattan. Both vehicles eventually crashed 17 miles after the incident began in um, Manhattan's Upper East Side, where the driver of the yellow pickup truck allegedly stabbed the driver of the black sedan. A witness uh, captured video of the crash showing a man yelling at the police while the um, other driver is seen sitting on the curb with a large gash on his calf. Another witness told WABC that they ran out and saw the whole ordeal go down in front of a business uh, they were inside. One of them got out of the yellow car. Um, there was three guys and opened the black and black car and uh, started stabbing the other guy. When I say stabbing, stabbing his neck and stabbing his legs. And that's uh, when the two other guys fled and then that's, um, that's when the cops came running across the street and they arrested the guy that stabbed the guy. Wow, lots of guys, lots of guys, lots of guys, there, lots of stabbings. Um, definitely not good. Uh, he's definitely going to go down for a long time. If that's true, if uh, that news is coming through of that stabbing, intent. Um, he did not leave home intending to stab anyone on that day, but actually having a knife on him and actually carrying out that um, criminal act is definitely going to go down for a long time. If proven guilty, you are innocent until proven guilty. So I say, police said the victim, 20 year old, 28 year old man, suffered multiple stab wounds to his face and neck and was rushed to the local hospital. The victim is in stable condition, police said. Police said the attempted um, charges have been filed against Anto Lakotas, that's his name, Anto Lakotas, 28 of Brooklyn, in connection with the stabbing. Okay, right, well, that's it from me, Citizen Quincy, that's the name. Thank you very much for sticking along with me. We're going to end it here, and I think we're going to see you back on Monday, this Monday coming with the Karen Reed trial, bringing you the updates from the opening of that trial. So um, please, please, please um, subscribe below, press the like button, and of course, share this video with your friends. Thank you very much. We are out of here. Bye-bye. See you soon.